Um, there's a story uh, <coughs> that has been going around where, well, not so much even a story, uh, a number of people on Twitter were sharing um, sort of, uh, have you seen this person, missing person information around Twitter? And uh, if I saw it, I reshared it. Um, I didn't add anything to it. I didn't actually know anything about it. And of course, you know, with all the possibilities, um, what immediately I and everybody I think who saw this, uh, particularly the missing person reports, were immediately concerned about were, um, you know, there are a couple of cases involving foreign women and, and pretty, you know, horrible going missing for a long period of time and turning up murdered. Um, and so this was the first concern that there was a kidnapping or some sort of uh, thing like that. And the family was looking for um ellis hodge uh, hodgkinson um and um yeah a couple of days ago now uh it turns out and this is more covered in the british press than the local press but yes it's uh, i don't understand all the facts of this uh fully and honestly it's it's really uh, for me I, I i don't like you know talking about this sort of news very much but i think there's a purpose to it with this it appears that the police eventually uh, did go and her house was locked, but they broke in, they found a note, and apparently they found her inside. And uh, although I haven't seen anything directly say um, that it was suicide, that is what it appears to have been. Um, and, uh, you know, very sad, obviously, for her and her friends and her family and so on who were concerned for her. Um, and I don't know anything about her or her case or even the facts of this or even if that's accurate. So, you know... Um, and I'm not going to speculate about her at all other than to pass my condolences on to her family. However, that said, um, I thought I would take the opportunity to talk a little bit about there is something, there is a thing that, um, yeah, coming to, living in Japan as, a, as an expat, and I, I kind of don't really consider... Um, expats, I suppose, you know, it's a fuzzy sort of a definition, you know, uh, what's the difference between a foreigner and an expat? Well, you know, I suppose everyone who's not Japanese who lives in Japan are foreigners. I'm definitely a foreigner. I don't really consider myself an expat. Expat, expatriate implies someone living out of their normal country. Um, so I guess there's two ways that you look at that. You could look at that as being... Um, you know, somebody sort of assigned to Japan, like, uh, you know, working in a bank or something like that. And, and, you know, there's this sort of wealthy image of expats, people who are working in banks in Japan on assignments for a couple of years and living in like, you know, gov company housing in nice neighborhoods and stuff like that. There are other people who are just, uh, you know, living here without the intention, you know, of, of staying here for a long time. Um, of course, that second category can encompass, you know, uh, working holiday visa people and uh, tourists and whatnot. I suppose there is a thing that the, the people like that are not so looked after. Um, and of course, you know, uh, are not necessarily privileged sorts of people. Um, there is a thing, certainly, um, there are so many people um, for a long time who come to Japan and who are attracted to Japan who watch, uh, you know, channels like this. Um, <clears throat> because I'll be the first person to say that, you know, what's great about Japan is it's... Uh, it sort of has it's, it's a slightly different dimension it's got everything that you know you've got in other modern you know western countries and whatever but you know japan's got its own take it's got its own very unique sort of culture which has been able to protect you know from colonialism and whatnot and and on top of that the other thing that i would say is of course no place is perfect um but it's it's overwhelmingly generally you could say safe um and so uh you know it's a it's a great place to come and have a bit of an adventure um, to go out on your own and, you know, sort of particularly when you come at the sort of age that I came uh, when I was in my early 20s. Um, you know, it's a good place to come and have an adventure. And it's something I think a lot of people do in their 20s and whatever. Uh, and I certainly note the, the, the motivations for people and the numbers of people have changed over the years. It was definitely, when I got here, like, you know, now more than 20 years ago, it was still kind of weird and strange and rare to come to Japan. Uh, to, now, you say to people, hey, you know, I go to Japan, everyone goes, oh, I'm so, that's so cool. You know, I've been planning to go to Japan. Everyone seems to have trips planned to Japan nowadays, at least outside of COVID. So it seems to be less exotic to come here now. And, and people sort of recognize that they say, oh, that's so cool, which I've always thought, yeah, it's cool. That's why I'm here. But it's weird, it's gone a little bit mainstream lately. But certainly, uh, and I, the upside, I suppose, of it becoming more mainstream is that I think there are more foreigners here now, uh, which allows larger communities and, you know, better support networks and whatnot. But nonetheless, there is still a large percentage, a large group of people uh, that come to Japan. I think 
people who go anywhere, you know, who travel anywhere, there's all sorts of reasons that people travel. Um, and, and, you know, I don't think it's ever as simple as that they, people travel for positive or negative reasons. Um, people, you know, travel for uh, both, I guess. I mean, I, I'd certainly say that's, you know, in my case, absolutely. Um, positive in the sense of wanting to go and have an adventure and go and do something, you know, unique and asserting your own identity and so on. And so many people, you know, um, adore Japanese culture from all sorts of different perspectives that they come out here. Uh, it can, however, there, there are certainly, uh, I suppose you could say negative aspects. There are people who come because they are escaping uh, from social pressure, from, you know, feelings of, uh, certainly you come from a place like New Zealand, like where I came from, where you grow up and there's a relatively low population and low degrees of separation. Um, you know, the fact that I started playing rugby here shocked a lot of my schoolmates from school because they couldn't imagine <laughs> a nerd like me, you know, playing rugby. And that's why I left, uh, you know, so I could come here and play rugby, you know, badly. Uh, and I could do other things and you know there is that thing about wanting to sort of um, go out. and this is true uh, even you can do this domestically this is like when country people go to cities it's like when city people you know uh, travel or do, in, do anything like that We're going to a new place and surrounding yourselves with new people it's something actually you know a lot of people in the world do however the big thing about uh, coming to Japan that catches a lot of people out a lot of people talk about this is the idea that um, there is a big difference when you um i think it's it's a great part of becoming an adult which you particularly do in your 20s um is becoming sort of self-reliant and becoming confident in who you are and, and a big part of discovering that identity is making mistakes and, and facing adversity you know getting into trouble and and, and, and figuring things out um, and you've always got options for that. You either do that where you are, um, and the advantage of doing that where you are is you've got family and friends and support and whatnot nearby. Um, and, and, you know, the other option is to go out somewhere on your own and, and to build your own sort of life. And, you know, the upside is if you're not really happy with your home situation, if you're not sort of happy, and I'm not saying any of this applies in this particular case, but I'm just talking generally, uh, of, I think for a lot of the people who, who come to Japan, um, some people leave purely, I think, for an adventure or a whim. They don't even think about it very much. But there's a lot of people, I think, come to Japan with a lot of pre-set expectations that um, Japan is where people understand me. I, you know, I feel like the, I feel like the culture there fits better than the culture here. Now, I, that applies to me. Uh, when I was in New Zealand, I, I remember like when I started living on my own and every time you'd have like a flat party with my friends from high school or university, stuff would get stolen. You know, you couldn't trust people. You have to lock stuff up. I hated that. And this is in New Zealand, which is as safe as places get outside of Japan. I was, when I was living with Japanese people, you know, the fact that everyone has just uh, got a degree of trustworthiness and common sense that I consider normal. For me, that was that was a big thing. Um, but I know it goes beyond that. There are people who, you know, are awkward. Uh, there's a lot of people who come from all sorts of backgrounds where, you know, in a way they're running away from the awkwardness and hoping for a fresh start in a place like Japan. And, and, and truth is you get that with coming to Japan. That's a great thing about coming to Japan. However, <clears throat> the problem, of course, is, is that, you know, particularly if you're running away from something, you have to bear in mind that, you know, you are likely to run into, at the very least, the same kinds of problems you face where you are, and, and, and those problems are going to be much, much harder to deal with in Japan. And it's natural to be optimistic when you're going somewhere, you know, for the first time, um, you know, to, to, to basically go through it all with positivity and whatnot. But this is why most of the foreigners leave within three years is that it's hard to manage, you know, like even regular things, even paying bills, um, you know, doing normal sort of stuff is very hard um, to sort of uh, manage in Japan. Uh, you know, every, everything is harder to do, uh, including making friends, including, you know, having that sort of support. And, and you're in a much smaller, it's like you're in the small sort of village of foreigners. So, you know, it happens that when people are feeling really stressed and really isolated and, you know, small things, when they become really big things, um, you don't know, you don't have family nearby, you don't have the friends that you grew up with, you're often really on your own. And, you know, the, the, those support networks are not there and there are cases that I know about that of other people where, yeah, the, the stress of needing to cope on your own in Japan um, can lead to mental illness uh, you know people actually i've heard of cases of people being institutionalized um, but people having full on sort of stress and nervous breakdowns uh, cases uh, all the way up to and including suicide 
what happens with most people is they sort of realize that you know if they get to a point that they can't really go on most people leave that's and that, you know when they and sometimes they'll they'll leave to go somewhere else and start the process over again and you hear about people who hop all over asia in particular they'll go to korea china thailand and stuff like that um some particularly dysfunctional people who just go around being obnoxious in every country and stuff like that um but you know um majority of people treat it as an adventurous episode and they go home uh, I think what's making it particularly difficult at the moment, when you consider the impact of COVID on things like English teachers, for example, where people are going out less and they're having less classes and whatnot, and the extra economic stress from that, and not knowing how you know to be able to cope when you're struggling, like in daily life, um, and the fact that travel is restricted as well, so you can't even travel back home, uh, you know, if you want to at least as easily. Um, and things like vaccinations, when you get vaccinated, what if you get COVID, what if you need medical treatment? I mean, I can imagine there's a, there's a ton of stresses on, on, on people. Uh, foreigners from any country would be feeling, you know, uh, all the normal stresses that, that can make people, you know, push, push people over the edge uh, enough as it is, uh, let alone you add on top of it the situation that we're dealing with right now. Um, from that perspective there are not a lot of you know the, well I, I do want to share that there is this uh um and by the way i've seen positive and, and negative things about this but the first thing is i mean i know what it's like myself to be in a situation of extreme stress like you know break, breaking up with somebody and being out on my own and sort of wondering what the hell i'm doing while i was struggling at work when i was sitting up in japan and genuinely having no one to talk to <laughs> having no friends uh, i've been through that and it's like you know I, I look back on it now and i kind of laugh on it laugh at it because it was the same it's like you know it's, it's remembering a really miserable you know awful experience that really stressed me out a lot and really made me question a lot of things about my life i wouldn't say i ever got you know close to i definitely got into i'd say a situation like depression i, I think i've definitely gotten into that and i think most people i've talked to have lived long term in japan have been through this sort of thing and truth is um i you know and i wanted to talk to people but i didn't have them around to talk to and i, and I wouldn't have known to, uh, where or how to reach out to something like this so the fact that something like tell japan exists is a great thing um and you know there are resources now thanks to the internet for people to know that they can um there are services where you can reach out in english they are limited they're hard to find but this is why look at, if you look up gaijin pot there are counseling services and so on um, definitely this Tell Japan, it sounds like there's a lot of amateur sort of counselors there and so on, but you know what, I mean, it still is better than nobody, and I, I believe there's a lot of people in Japan in a nobody situation, uh, and I've been through that situation myself, and I wouldn't recommend it to other people, I, I, I'm, I, and by the way, I would be awful to talk to, because I, I am myself very much the sort of uh, go hard or go home, sort of, you know, psychologically unhealthy type that I really believed myself that I had to sort of tough it out, and you know, I, I, I did it, but I wouldn't recommend it to anybody. So, um, look, I, I just want to, like, note the story. It's uh, terribly sad for her family, and I have no idea what she was going through. But I do know that, um, you know, the people are under extraordinary... Uh, just being in Japan can be a great adventure, but it can also be extraordinarily stressful, even when things are normal. And things are definitely not normal right now. If you add on top of that the travel restrictions... The, the 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 economic uncertainty and the health and everything else i know there's a lot of people out there right now going through a lot of things you know and you imagine the stress that that puts on to things like relationships um and everything else uh, i know there's a lot of people going through a lot um and uh all i can say is that there's there are resources out there to help and it's much better than it was uh, also the other thing i, I, I just remind people in, in normal the normal situation is it's okay to go to leave and come back you know um you know it's not worth uh some people get so invested in being here and they th they equate leaving to being some sort of a failure and and, and again I'll, I'll relate when i was going through dark moments of my early years in japan that's totally how i saw it and that's a really dangerous and unhealthy way to look at things um you know um i think you should always need to think even if you're completely positive and sure that you're going to stay in japan think about what your plan b is think if Tokyo sank into the ocean, you know, which actually is a possibility. <laughs> uh, again, you, you, we all know this sort of thing can happen in Japan. You got to have a plan for where, where you know, where you're going to stay. Where would you go if you had to get on a plane and leave the country tomorrow? If Japan was kicking out all the foreigners, you got to have that in the back of your, your brain, you know, just so that you you know what your plan B is. Um, so look, have a plan B and. Uh, 
and, and remember, you know, the, the point is everything is a two-way door. Every every choice, there's no choice involving staying in Japan that, that can't be reversed or undone and then redone, you know. So remember, there's always, you know, there's always better alternatives. Uh, there's ways out of situation. You're never stuck in a situation. Um, and there, and if you need help, there are options for help. And, uh, you know, um, this is a first place to start, but definitely Google online and uh, try to find what's out there. And, you know, um, please, everybody, uh, I, I really would love to meet every one of you in Japan at some point. Um, and and what, after all this craziness is over, hopefully it will become over at some point, you know, to do another meetup and, you know, things like that is, is great. But, um, you know, um, it's an adventure, but it's, uh, you know, it, it, it's like being in a race. You, you are allowed to pull into the pits. <laughs> you know, you know, you, you have to take care of yourself first to be able to enjoy everything else. Um, so, you know, just to, just to, for everyone watching this, just, uh, you know, um, I, I would say, you know, um, think of this story and just think, you know, uh, I, I, I feel terrible for the idea that somebody was in a situation that they felt they didn't have any other sort of, you know, options. Um, you know, and, and remember how important it is to make sure you leave those options for yourself. That's part of planning your adventure, right, is, is making sure that you've got those safety nets and you know where they are. And they are out there. Those options are there. So anyway, that's the first thing I wanted to talk about. Uh, not what I normally talk about, but um, yeah, I, I, you know, this is a pertinent story and a good time to remind everybody. Ah. Yeah, Kerberos Tenshi, a lot of people have this romantic image of Japan and want to live that life and then realize it's not that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, I, you know what? Well, that's kind of the point. Thank you. You put the point I was trying to make better than I made it, Kerberos Tenshi. I think that's exactly it. A lot of people have this kind of idealized view of Japan. And I, again, I don't know if that's anything to do with this case. But there's a lot of people I know who come here and they, you know, discovering that anime isn't real. Um, <laughs> and that Japan isn't like a, a real life version of anime or something like that. There's people who go through that and I know who get traumatized by that. There's actually a reverse version of that, by the way. There's something called Paris Syndrome, which is where Japanese who have this, have this over-romanticized uh, image of Paris go to Paris and discover everyone's kind of rude, <laughs> slightly racist at times. And they, they, they get traumatized and they start having association disorder or something like that. And, the, 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 you know, they actually have hotlines at the embassy in, in Paris for dealing with Japanese, dealing with the inverse version that people seem to come to Japan and have from, uh, you know, um, believing, uh, and not just any man, I mean, you know, the people who come here for the um, uh, martial arts and for, you know, the Buddhism and all that sort of stuff as well, but yes, indeed. Yeah, yeah, and uh, it sounds like in this particular case she left a, a letter, but yes. Uh, Baldrick Big Balls, is he talking about Ryan Boundless? I'm not talking about Ryan Boundless. I don't know much about the guy other than I saw the, the, the criticizing the sandwich video, which actually I quite i thought was quite good but uh yeah personally I, I don't like to you know again this is maybe a, a survival mechanism going through here through 23 years as i try not to spend too much uh, attention on people who i think are overwhelmingly negative um you know there are some people like that i wouldn't use the word toxic people can be however they like there are some people who just like to be negative but you know uh, i don't need to spend my time watching uh him but but yes uh, i understand that he was a big topic for a t for a while Aaron, western women can have a hard time in japan for sure i think it's a bit different for men sure i mean you know but uh, it can be tough for men too um you know it's like the suicide rate in japan is terrible for men and it's been you know going up for women but it still is one tenth of men uh, it's not to say that women are not going through a tough time right now. Just the same. Um, but certainly, yes. Uh, I think for women, certainly you hear about things like... Um, uh, the big complaint, of course, that you hear about the stereotype is a romantic situation where, you know, men that they're interested in are all into Japanese women, but Japanese men are often intimidated by Western women. And, uh, yeah, I, I've spent many drinks and dinners hearing people express frustration <laughs> at the social opportunities in Japan being limited. But there again... I mean, so many Western women I know who have become, you know, who, who marry Japanese guys and have great relationships here and then do set themselves up. So sometimes, you know, uh, but they're, you know, perhaps they came in with a certain mindset that opened them up for more success. Um, but uh, yeah, no, certainly, so, uh, it's, it's easier for men. Uh, I think that's a fair statement. I think you're right about that, Aaron. Um, yeah, my uh, mental health notes, <laughs> which... 
Yeah, uh, believe me, I, the last thing I want to do on this channel is do anything other than direct people to good health. You know, and again, uh, I don't know if this is necessarily the best one, but to direct you to where you can get mental health support because I wouldn't pretend to be able to give advice on it myself uh, other than to tell you I can, I can certainly give advice on what I've done that's wrong. Um, I can share lots of uh, mistaken uh, advice and experience, uh, but yeah. Oliver Cromwell, I don't like Japan. I'm moving to Iceland instead. Well, good on you, Oliver Cromwell. I'm sure Iceland is looking forward to having you. Uh, AV84K, they're, they're, and honestly, there are nicer places in France to visit. Uh, Avignon, for example, I'm, I'm sure, actually. Uh, and I'd love to visit France sometime. But again, the problem is you have too many Japanese who... Exactly, it's like it's, it's exactly the same as believing anime is real and coming to Japan and discovering that it's not and being traumatized is what happens with Paris. And, you know, look, Paris has done a great job marketing itself. <laughs> Maybe too good of a job. I, I'm not sure I would have the same expectations. I would totally expect to, to see sewer rats and, 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 and meet rude people, as well as still have awesome food and have a great time. But yeah, I don't really have a romanticized view. That's the point, right? Dan H. Good to see you, Dan H. Also, be careful about moving abroad. Have a backup plan. Is your friend stuck in Beirut with electrical problems and hyperinflation? Well, there you go. There's a, there's a, there's a case for a plan B. That plan B is a really, really important part. I mean, like when I went to South America, I remember my uncle telling me when I was going to Argentina, you know, carry a credit card inside your sock, inside your shoe. Um, you know, wear, 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 wear a second sort of money belt inside your underwear and all this sort of stuff. Like basically expect to be mugged. And as, as, as much as I was like, you know, holy crap, you know, I really want to go to Argentina. And I went to Argentina and I had a wonderful time there. But I'll tell you what, people... Tr I, I caught people trying to rob me in like the space of a week. I was backpacking. I was like 21. I, I caught people like three or four times. But the fact was that every single time I was able to get out of the situation safely. And because I followed my uncle's advice, I had a backup. I had coverage. I, you know, I knew I wasn't about to lose my passport or my money from any of these situations where people were trying to take my backpack. Um, yeah, it left less of a bad taste because I, I sort of went in there with the plan B. Going going into a place with no plan B is, yeah, uh, even in Japan, you're opening yourself up to a lot of risk. Um, how did I hide my money? Uh, yeah, I, I had a money belt and, and credit cards. I had all the backups. And when I went out, you know, I didn't put anything. I always had a bit of money in my backpack, but I wasn't, you know, I, I wouldn't have been stranded in Argentina if I'd lost my backpack. Um, and all that I just had to, you know, <laughs> slapped some kids away. That was just sort of how I dealt with that. Um, interest in Japan. What am I doing uh, during my vacations to relieve stress in Japan? Well, I'm not really doing a lot. I'm staying at home with my family, which honestly speaking doesn't always reduce stress. Um, <laughs> honestly, nothing. Uh, I, I would love to go. I don't have a car. Uh, I've never had a car the whole time I've lived in Japan. So, you know, personally, I've been jogging has been the thing that I do mostly for stress relief. Um, you know, hanging out at home, playing games with my son, going up the park, playing catch, stuff like that. Normal stuff, but that's that's pretty pretty low key stuff. Honestly, summer's the problem with summer is that it's so hot here that you can't really escape. So that's that's the big thing with that. But yeah, um, <laughs> guys, English world staying with my family honestly doesn't relieve stress. Uh, yeah, you know, you know. <laughs> and particularly in the summer here, where you're just trapped inside because you can't go outside because it's so damn hot. You have that. Anyway.